coming to you from Crash Studios in Music City, USA, Nashville. This is the Rich Redman Show. Featuring special guests Kurt Allison and Tully Kennedy. And now, Rich Redman. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Rich Redman here. I am your host. This is the Rich Redman Show. It's episode three. I know these guys are going to say, why episode did you wait three, three episodes? <laughs> what the heck? Just like what last happened? time, you guys know these. Sounds like three. a waste of three episodes. <laughs> you guys know that these are the three kings. What happened? Self-proclaimed. Uh, we have Tully Kennedy on bass, Kurt Allison on guitar. We've been playing music together for 20 years. We've been bringing the music of Jason Aldean to life for 20 years. We've got a lot of stories, a lot of history. Of course, I'm joined by my sidekick, co-host sidekick. Jim McCarthy. <laughs> I'm no sidekick. Oh, you're my co-host. Sidekick. You're my co-producer. <laughs> you're the one that makes this thing happen. <laughs> he does. He's just yeah. glad to be here. He's I the am. chief bottle washer. I'm just glad you have me. Jim McCarthy, voiceovers.com. Just lucky to be here. And That's of it. course, his side hustle, Big Dot Lighting. Big Dot Lighting, That's Big right. Dot Electrical. Don't forget Jim Keller. McCarthy. Keller's here. Yeah, Keller's yeah, in Keller. the audience. He's in the audience. <laughs> hey, feel free to clap when we do something really cool. Yeah. That's, that's a bump. That's, yeah. We're still learning the buttons. But where's the audience? There it is. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Ooh. Merv giving stuff. <laughs> I can't stop saying it. Jim, I still need a tiny bit more of myself. It's 58. This I feel like your two really mics sound much better than <laughs> yeah. Tully's. And I hear yeah, you just fine. Dude, this mic, something's not right. It's the, it's the cable or... Is it, is it fuzzy? I know microphones. This isn't good. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Uh, I think you're probably good. you're Thank probably you, a Kelly. little too close. We got the Planet Waves cables from. I'll, I'll deal with it. You'll deal with it. Yeah. Is that an okay. endorsement? So I good. hope. Hey, can you get, lower my playback a little bit on my mic? It's a little hot. That's what I think. It's a little hot. I think yours is super hot. clear though Why too. Is so hot? Really? Oh yeah. Yeah, yours is good. How's so we're cutting a vocal. Awesome. <laughs> Mine's good. This sounds like we're playing bingo. There we go. This is great. Hey guys, these are audio. Right. These are audio technical microphones. So yeah, you don't have to be like uh, like on it. No. See, I don't have one. I was sure. I didn't stand up my book like this, guys. That was Jim McCarthy. But for you consumers out there, people that are hungry for knowledge, this book took a long time to put together. Crash Course of Success, Five Ways to Supercharge Your Personal and Professional Life is available at Amazon.com. It's got a perfect rating. If you're an Amazon nice. Prime member, it'll show up to your door the very next day. Hey, so it is Amazon Prime. You can get it next day or two day. Next day on Amazon Prime. Prime nice. time, baby. And uh, we've also got the the digital version that goes right to your device. And I just recorded the Audible version, which will be available at audible.com in probably 30 days or so. So guys, the kings are here. Let's not waste time. We want to get right into <laughs> I have a it. question. I don't even know what we're going to talk about question? today, but it's great. I am not going to read it because I only read. Well, maybe you should get the audio. No, book. listen. No, no. I'm going to read it. But only in hardcover. I mean, it's fine. You already have a hardcover. Mm. I gave it to you the book? other day. A hardcover? You a gave hard Tully hard a hardcover? No, there's no, there's no profits a in a hardcover. <laughs> I, I need a hardcover book. <laughs> yeah. Only read The pages need to be crisp. These are pretty crisp. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right. Okay, so, hey, you know, what is, we're going to talk about. Jim is probably going to direct because Jim has all sorts of questions he likes to ask us because yeah, whatever comes up naturally. because we are you know we finish each other's sentences we've been on the road together sweat <laughs> blood diesel fuels man <laughs> plasma we, just in case we really have video games we really have been around each other a lot so we're in this world it's really hard to get outside of ourselves but what we have going on is we're on our maybe our 15th year of touring Nonstop with, with uh, Jason with Jason, yeah, Jason Aldean, yeah. mm -hmm. and we're done with our ninth record. The ninth record is probably coming out this fall, and I don't know if it's too premature to say, but we're probably going to have some sort of a theme song associated with some football thing going on again. <laughs> and you guys, I know you guys love that. That was a good cut. Good cut. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Thanks. So, Jim, what do you? You guys did well on that. What do oh, you guys? Thank you, yes, I played it for Jim, and he. he yes, yeah, it's, it's good. It does sound good. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I, my mic's not right. Something's wrong with my mic. I, I, I feel like I'm part of the, the podcast. I don't feel like I'm part of the Rich Redmond show right now. No, you really are. It's just I ordered I ordered five four microphones from Audio. How do I sound in, in your cans, Jim? I, my cans sound great. Okay, yeah. I'll you just sound, do it. You sound great. I think I you're, little, very, you're, you're on it really tight, though. Maybe you're yeah. you're, you're not, not you're not that close. You're not in front of twenty five thousousand no. people, man. Just, you, can just, back, you can back off a little like, bit like this. What no, do you think, it's, Keller? It's, it's uh, it's definitely needs. You got to eat the sure. You got to eat the shures. The shures are good. What do you think, Keller? 
There you go. Keller likes nice. it. All right, Jim, where are you leading this? Where am I? Oh, I'm leading this? You're leading this conversation this because I don't have anything to ask these guys. <laughs> Nothing. So what are you guys' influences? I'm just joking. That's, oh, that's yeah. Not yeah. Sorry. That's a great. That's actually great. I'm well, sure I know I, I know. you based on our history together. I know yeah. you're a big based Adam. on our history. Based, based. based. <laughs> yeah, Adam Clayton. You know, we talk about yeah. this. You know, you two. It's, you two. It's in that sting. you actually talk about it in that world class documentary. You know, who I didn't talk about That's last time one. though. What? Who's? And it's bothered me since then. Equally, <laughs> <laughs> it has you lay me. awake at night. <laughs> it has. You know why? Because I've forgotten to mention this guy. And not just the Rich Redmond saga of things we do, but the other interviews I do for... That was close, by the way. Oh, my gosh. Rich almost fried... Almost fried the mixer. Our sweet roadcaster pro. Mine. Then we wouldn't be able to hear John Hall go, Shazam! Shazoo! Shazam! There he is. <laughs> but Tom Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Aerosmith. Aerosmith. Oh, that's um, here, right? No. Doesn't he? Oh, it's something in a Tom Peters from Cheaper. But I've done numerous... <laughs> yeah, I've different time i have done numerous interviews and 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 forgotten to mention his name and it's like so i just want to say that now i feel better from aerosmith yeah from aerosmith, yeah tom <clears throat> hamilton les claypool right no no sorry i appreciate him i do He's appreciate him you know why i think yeah your your levels are really high that's why try it now too hey no it's gone. oh my gosh it's gone. yeah it's you were you were peaking well it's it's not there oh, should we start peaking. the show over no, no. No, no, okay. no. Okay. no. We wow, this is this is good banter. Yeah, this is good banter. I really need where I was though. I think. Oh my gosh. There's something with the XLR cable here. Oh, I think you were peeking. Yeah, I, think I, I might was. have been peeking. Go ahead and turn it all the way down. <laughs> Thank I, you. I'm Kelly. still learning how this works. You have a very strong voice. Keller wants his dad off. It's the mic. You should get a sample of Keller doing something. <laughs> What's like a good catchphrase you could say? <clears throat> uh, Love is a sword. Forever is a sword. Forever is just a word. Yeah. Yeah. This is good, Jim. I can, I can That's good. Nice. I, I like, I it, like a lot it better. That's like much better. better. Yeah. Yeah. So what, were you, what were your influences, Kurt? Oh, man. Let's not do this. Eddie Van Let's get to something more ah, that's not interesting. Either. Brett Mason. I love Brent. I know. That's why I said, said it. Brent Mason. Nick Mason. Drummer. Yeah. Nick Floyd. Mason Jar. You Mason know what? Jar. There's, a crazy. Certain, there's a certain... Jars of clay. There's some bands <laughs> out there that I put on a list... Right. Of highly overrated bands, and I can't. Oh, let's talk about uh, this. That's a great. Oh my that's God. A great let's do this. I don't know, let's do guys. highly overrated bands. Hey, you know what? Let's do it. This is the dirt, the real dirt. I say we do it because it's, what? just give me one. You like being Wait. controversial, though. No, what? No, no, not yes. really. No, yes. stop. Yeah, yes. he does. What are you? Oh. Yes, of course you. You and Kevin Murphy should have a middle. show. <laughs> He oh and Kevin <laughs> The Kevin and Hey Rich. The Kevin and Kurt sitting in the middle. That's really good. Totally in the middle. That's really funny. What kind of genre though? Rock. Uh, and this is appropriate left, right. Progressive rock. Progressive rock? Yeah. Let's do Athlete. any genre. Is a genre or genre? It's genre. Genre. Sh- it's genre. Is it genre? It's crazy. Ooh. Go genre. <laughs> Overrated. What's that word that you guys think that, that impression pronounced correctly? Uh, Very correctly. I got it. It's it's uh, niche. Um, niche. 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 No, it wasn't. It's the, the use word. of it. It was the use of niche. I say niche all the time for everything. How about people who say supposedly? Oh, oh or, God, the, or, or the medium. In the, uh, in the road. I don't know if we should make the <laughs> list of, th- of people that we don't like because it's a music business and we're, it's a very small world. No, just give me about. one. Just give me one. I I, I like... Um, you brought it up. Mm. Oh, come on. Come on. I mean, I'm not a... I understand what they brought to music, but I don't really like listening to Pink Floyd. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> well, that's unfortunate considering... Right, favorite no, do you, do you guys like to crank player. it up but like okay. at your house you're Pink like oh Floyd. wow uh, well as a guitar player it <laughs> you, yeah, you have to respect this Maybe music Gilmore. but yeah Gilmore yeah that's great I, I, w- I would say in, in Rich's defense you know where I'm coming there, from there are a lot of Pink Floyd songs that are magical most of them um, <clears throat> and some got a little bit out there but um, I got one what, you gonna go there? No, I'll go there just because I mean we'll it's never not work like, again. It's not like they're gonna listen. <laughs> we'll yeah. never oh, work again. Uh, but I was never a Stones guy. <laughs> what? Yeah. Eh, don't get it. I, I can, don't I, like I can see Watts. that. You don't I like can Charlie see that. Watts, right? I can see that. I, I mean, 
I work sympathy the, for the devils. Cool. There's a couple things that are cool. I know Honky Tonk Woman is in your it's top my five favorite song of all time. It's really? the number one sit-in song in the world. If you, you know, but I don't know. Are you listening to any albums? Yeah, no, no. I mean, which yeah. ones? I mean, I, I I have them all. You know, I mean, I I, which I like ones the, are you I like, listening to? I like the fact that they play. I, usually, the greatest hits is where I, where I go to. <laughs> you guys ever watch The Office? Oh, love yeah, the Office. Of Remember the Smokey Robinson episode? <laughs> <laughs> Keller loves The Office. Yeah. So. He's like, oh man, Smokey Robinson died. <laughs> and, <he's> like, <laughs> and she's like, oh, good news, he didn't die. And he's playing two weeks from now. <laughs> Tickets are $350 a piece. Why don't we go ahead and get you some for you, Ron? No, no, no. No, you know, you, yeah, you, he's, he's trying That's to get it off. Tully, what's yours? Well, I'm going to dig deep here. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, I'm going to start by saying I, I appreciate this band. We always appreciate it. Oh, you guys are. St- but I'm Rich, supposed to be the one that's Rich, politically Rich diplomatic. No, no, I, I I do appreciate what they did, and maybe it's because I was force fed this band at a young age from my Steely father, Dan. Steely Dan. Um, wow, Steely yeah. Dan. I, I I can't. Do you want to go back to the history of of? Well, I got him his. I got the Asia record for him for even his though birthday. he knew I didn't like Steely Dan, <laughs> he got it for himself. No, I got and it. He for handed you. it to me. He handed it to me. Happy birthday in a crack See what case. I did, Jim. Yeah, yeah. He it to stoking me the fire. Yeah, the, the case was cracked, and he goes, <laughs> "Happy birthday!" And I said, <laughs> "I said, did you get me a Steely Dan album?" He goes, "Yeah, it's great." I said, "You know I don't like Steely Dan." Was it a cassette? It was oh, a CD. CD. I got a Walgreens. CD. Yeah, okay. my Walgreens, and checking out, and uh. <laughs> And I said, well, he knew I didn't like Steely Dan. We had this conversation for years. So what did you do? Well, I you, was, did you kept it. I thought it was record it off it to a cassette? Is that why you opened it? <laughs> no, it just got cracked. He opened it. Oh, he just cracked it. That was yeah. it. Thank you, Kurt. <clears throat> anyway, I, I'm going to appreciate it, but I'm never, I, I would never sit there and Not your thing. subject myself A lot of those it. bands I can agree mm-hmm. with. Because, I mean, I, was, I worked for a classic rock station in Connecticut, and a lot of them were played on that station. And I'm yeah. like, I, guys, I just don't get it. And then at Jack FM, you... I like Jack FM's playlist. Yeah. It's like a nice cross pollination of 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. Is that still? Pop and rock. It's still a, happening. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, it's, it's, it, I just kind of got sick of classic rock. You know, if um, Rolling Stones or anything came on. Or at like, least the cliche songs yeah, that were played. Yeah, dude, every freaking rock. break, it was right. like, you know, yeah, that was another 40 minute long set on the home of rock and roll I 95 with the latest from the. Um, from Led Zeppelin. Yeah, I mean, I love Led Zeppelin, but I don't want to hear yeah. Stairway to Heaven. Yeah. But right. yeah. just because it's been played this this topic times. keeps on coming up and I apologize. I'm I'm on a huge Avengers kick. And in the Thor movies, um in Ragnarok, Thor all of a sudden comes down to uh dun 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 nice. right. immigrant song. Yeah. Right? Nice. I'm in oh, dude. He's I'm an immigrant in. from outer space. But the funny thing but well he's you it's know, a great we come soundtrack from the land song. of the ice and snow, and it's all about yeah. you know Valhalla and everything. Gotcha. Norse guys. Those guys are really it's nice. Place Lord of the Rings. Oh and my stuff. gosh! It was so. Place. I was like, yes. That <laughs> yeah. Like crescendo nice. with a movie and nice. him just coming down with the lightning and twenty guys on a pile ready to be destroyed wow. without the hammer. Yeah. He wasn't I, bringing the hammer down. He's. I feel kind of bad because I feel kind of like I got off easy by saying Steely Dan because these guys mentioned big ones, big bands. Well, I mean, Steely's big. I mean, it's like, you know, they, it, they people use that to tune PA systems and studios. I, I feel equally, you know, equally like sonically, the same, it's amazing. The <laughs> equal amount of um, <laughs> appreciated disdain I have is for Rush. Really? Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Too much, uh, I, it, it's, I, I'm never. Yeah, but uh, they're a math band. I, I'm going to say that, rock. I'm going to say they're. But they're storytelling. Wildly overrated. Yeah. Not just overrated. I think they can. Play fast licks and that's cool and a lot of playing, but ah, I don't get it. Just it's just I don't right. want to take some heat for that. I, no, man, that's, that's a good there. segment. Oh, we're going I like down, it. guys. I like it. I, oh, I, I just we're fine. I just never been. A, These are dirty secrets. I, I mean, no, I, I know I never liked Getty Lee's voice. I I never liked his tone. I know. I'm sorry. It's just it. It's a kind of a lot going on. He's a really nice guy. Yeah, he just wrote a you book. Gotta give him that. He's a baseball fan. Yeah. I know. He's Canadian. Why did you say that by the me as a guy? <laughs> I feel like something's <laughs> is Getty coming in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can. Funny you should say that. I mean, <laughs> we can get to anybody. I mean, we are one degree of separation from everybody. I used to Let be me sex. ask you this. Okay, here's a good topic guilty pleasures. Oh. Um, so many. Uh, uh, 
subdivide it. Give me, you mean yeah. music? Carmel Ice Cream. cream. You, know, you know, what do you, it's your off time. What do you want to do? Music, TV, movie. Anything. Uh, no, I, I want a blizzard. Food? I want a cookies and cream blizzard. You're going food. Food. Yeah. yeah. Cookies and cream blizzard, and they at the window they Wendy's? show you that it's thick and creamy. That's upside down. Guilty uh, pleasure. That's, that's, a, that's a very interesting gesture you're making there. I know my guilty pleasure. It's food as well. Is it food? What would people be surprised to know about you in terms of like you know musical tastes or movies? Hmm. Oh, interesting. Wow. Making me dick deep, Jim. Like mine has been the Avengers Marvel Cinematic Universe thing. And it's, it's but really, I mean, that's a pretty common. It is. It's kind of cliche, but I mean, I, I don't. I don't know. I don't get it because I don't enjoy much anymore. So, hmm. yeah, I've I've enjoyed that too. My son Keller's over here. He uh, pulled me into the Avengers realm, right? Yeah. And so we've. I, I would you know had I not had him, I would have never seen these movies. But I really do enjoy that. My daughter's you know? to the point where if anything DC comes on the TV, she'll leave the room. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, what is the deal? See, I don't get that. What's the no big... Ba- uh, no bad Coke and Pepsi, buddy. Yeah, exactly. But can't you, can't you like both? Come on. You, I mean, we've watched Aquaman and Wonder Woman. Oh. It's like, oh, and you're speaking to they're somebody that doesn't terrible. really know the yeah. difference here. So. Well, I mean, they're, it's, it, they're trying... They're, they're a Me Too version of what Marvel has done. Yeah. They're, they're That's really, not really Me Too. Wow. They're really Let's trying. talk about Me Too. That's <laughs> It is. Wow. <laughs> okay. Talk about, you know, slamming, you know, underrated brands. Keller, that's the way you feel? It's the truth. Okay, it's dirty. Oh, it's dirty the word. truth. Yeah. yeah. It's it's a fact. They had the complete, DC has the complete advantage and they completely flopped with it. Oh, they completely screwed up. Yeah. Wow. Aquaman was awful. It was they, terrible. They have the advantage mm-hmm. because of the popularity of Superman and Batman? Yeah. They, I feel you like know what it is? Is that their characters yeah, aren't flawed. But they're green screens. Yeah, uh, it's not the it's the characters. It's the, it's yeah. everything. It's the way they, they, yeah. they all connect. Yeah. Did yeah. you watch all the End Game and, and Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I've, I've, we've yeah. They are releasing, re-releasing. This will probably be actually after it happened. They announced today they're re-releasing it into the theaters. Wow. To beat out Avatar. To beat Avatar. Oh wow. They're like forty million dollars away from beating them. I never saw Avatar. I did. Really? You did? What was your take? I remember liking it yeah. at the time. Yeah. Or, uh, it was okay. Visually, Remember, the big thing was it came out on IMAX too, didn't it? Yeah. When it first came out. The 3D was just unbelievable. Yeah. What year did that come out? Oh, nine. Was it oh, nine? No, earlier yeah. than that. Seven? Right? It, 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 this movie will topple two James Cameron films. It already did for Titanic. Hmm. Interesting. And now... Uh, Avatar. I remember Titanic, the little CGI <clears throat> people walking on the deck of the boat. It was amazing at the time. I know. We were like, wow. Yeah. Look at that attention. I feel like we're detail. losing him out there. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I know if we ever got him. I got buddy. a weird feeling that this isn't doing it for No, me. I mean, a lot of people are going to listen to the Three Kings just because they want to pe- They want to be behind the curtain. They want to peek behind the curtain, even if we're talking about nothing. I mean, that's usually what we are talking about. <laughs> yeah. I figured you'd drive this. No, no I'm not driving it today. I really love really? the fact that you're driving it as our co-host today because I am part of the Three Kings. Right. And I know True. everything about these gentlemen, and I really don't know what angle to take today. We're still trying to find our... I uh, like it when Jim takes the wheel, though. Yeah. I mean, really? it's, it's great. Yeah. It's great in this situation. My last two guests, I mean, wow, I did a good job. It was great. <laughs> you did. You were, you were very masterful. Very thank, impressive. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. I liked it. Mm. Time in the trenches. Time in the trenches. So hashtag rich hosts, rich hosts. Yeah. <laughs> Richredmond.com forward slash host. It's happening. So, um, getting into it. Tell me a little bit about your guys' histories and stuff like that. Talk, you know, when did the, everything start to mesh? Well, it, it, it meshed, uh, the three of us, uh, as far as that goes, it meshed pretty instantly. Well, we, pl- we played together mm-hmm. and you guys played together. And then we said, Oh, you know him? Oh, you know him? And then you brought me in on the Amy yeah. Deli, and that's when we all came in together. Yeah, and the meshing was it's all instantaneous. Well, let me ask you this. What was going to be plan B? If uh, there was no, oh, Yeah, no plan B. There was no plan that's B. That's part of the... Still is no plan B. There's always a, There's got to be something. There was no, a, no, 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 no. There was no, no plan, plan B. B. Well, Kurt went to uh, audiovisual media training school for a while, right, to work at the TV station and do, like, graphics and voiceovers and stuff. Oh, really? And Tully has just been... He ran the band's light, drove the milk truck. He's been playing bass. Were, like, there was no back... There was no, no plan. There was no plan. It was... Uh, Ever. Maybe that's the, the positive thing about moving here so young, you know, is that... There was no plan B. He was going to play music and met these guys. And that turned out the destiny was already 
there in place, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I was talking to somebody today, Rich. Uh, I can't remember his name. He's a tech. So I'm at Lifetime Fitness. He's got tat- works for Urban, maybe. He's got tattoos. Mm-hmm. Uh, he knows you, and he's a super nice guy. Yeah. But I was telling him, he asked a similar question. I said, you know, I've been very lucky to have my best friend, but I'll create this musical core that we never had to stray from. So we, I don't have a lot of horror stories. I've got some horror stories, but not like, we've been pretty fortunate to spend, you know, a many, many years together and not have to, you know, stray from each other, which, which is a, but no, you Each had thing. you had a magical path, dude. You never worked a day gig, dude. Like I was like I substitute Todd, had to drag my butt out of bed. I waited tables. I was, I mean, I was always doing some, and I and I did more gigs than you. You just ended up finding gigs that paid. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. no. Whether you with the whether you were with not how Rose Falcon or whether you were were with. <laughs> whoever you always it was like oh i got just enough money to pay the rent pay my bills and have a cocktail <laughs> well i mean yeah yeah i did a lot of bad gigs when i first moved here before but you I didn't work you. day jobs either i was the one that was always getting up and doing day well, we were, gigs we, we're more visionaries though i think we <laughs> i think we just got to set ourselves apart i'm not kidding we're, we're the no, ones that it's said. timing it's t- and, and actually i and and i and i play bass and honestly you know at that point of just playing bass you know, if you could sing and play bass, you could work, and that you could, it's 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 still that way. Like drummers, uh, you it's know, a lot of drummers, a lot of drummers, but guitar players. There wasn't a guitar player like Kurt is in town. It, it, a lot of country guys, but this is a different time. You got to remember, this is you know mid to late nineties yes. where it was a lot of drummer. I mean, everybody was a drummer. Everybody uh, was. It a seems drummer. like still is. You know, but um, I would say that very. You know. I, I tell us so, all kidding aside, you know, talent and and, and all, you got to have all that, and, and the timing's crucial, and it's all comes together, and it doesn't for some people, unfortunately. A lot of great people who are talented, and timing can be strange. You know? Well, looking at the crash course philosophy, God, you guys are pushing this thing. Yeah, commitment, relationship, sure my attitude, own book. skill, and <laughs> hunger. Um, those, I mean, it couldn't have come together more perfectly than that acronym. For anything, right? Is that are the, these tenets kind of familiar to what you guys applied early on? Well, we made we made a commitment to stay together. We made a commitment to the artists that we were working with. We honored our relationships. We brought out the best in other people through our relationships with them. We always had a great attitude as far as what it came with, like making it easy for people to work with us and making it a, a, a joyful experience. We had enough skill together, you know, to you could put anybody in front of us that had like zero experience karaoke singers. You got signed to record deals and we would make them sound like they were like seasoned. And then we, all these years later, we still have a hunger to be successful, you know. But I mean, back then you were really hungry. Yeah. yeah. Very hungry. And I don't, yeah. you know. It, like, it wasn't like it was a self-help book for us at that time, obviously. Yeah. We can apply those principles to stuff now, but at that time, it was desperation and passion, maybe those two things. I mean, mm-hmm. we were desperate to work, and we were passionate about music yes. and each other, and that really just did it for us. I, I mean, it mean, really did, though. We we had a great, and we still do have a great work ethic. Like, we worked really hard. We would. I was talking to Kurt the other day about this. We'd do, you know, some makes two to three, four showcases a week. You know what I mean? And, the, and these guys memorized everything. And we would, and we would, and they were not lazy. They were literally, we, we rented a, a house over in Donaldson and then Hermitage, and we would each, each be in our respective rooms, and I would be charting and programming loops and listening to the stuff on. These guys would have it underneath their fingers, and by the next day, they would have it completely memorized. We would go load into 12th and Porter, um, sometimes with or without cartage, and then the artist would show up. We would run the show several times, take a short break, do the showcase, which is usually five to six songs for the industry show makes show tastemakers. Right? They would come out and they would get the cigars, and they'd be like, "I don't hear it," you know, or they'd be like, "I love it, kid." And we did this all the time as a as an industry. Yeah, and I don't think. I don't know if we knew that there was another way, you know, like Tully was talking about work ethic. I don't know that we knew another way. That's just the way that we approached it. That's the way that all of us approached it. I think it was part of the allure of being with each other is that we really, uh, you know, 
had a lot of respect for each other's playing and who we were as people and also the work ethic as well. I mean, that's just, you know, that was the way it went with us. We showed so, up prepared, over-prepared. So for the layman, a showcase, typically people don't prepare for them like that. Is what you're saying. Uh, well, we yeah. rehearsed all day with an artist, and then we would go the next day and do a sound check with them, a long sound check with them. I think typically people would just listen to the song right out of chart. They show up and Music play the chart. We always thought it was important that the artists felt like they had a band behind them. <clears throat> right. Not side musicians. So that set you guys apart. You understood the the the, the virtue of differentiation as a core rhythm yeah. section. And, so. and Rich, Rich could try to, and, and, and Rich could kind of, you know, look over his, as he's sitting down, look over to his side and kind of read. But me and Kurt didn't. We'd have to have stands up there, and nothing. Uh, still to this day, watching a show with, and it, someone with a stand in front of him playing bass or playing guitar just feels like oh, people are, well, what, are the, what is he looking at could have worked harder yeah. maybe you know yeah. well we worked we worked hard for our money and then you know you know good news travels fast but bad news travels twice as fast and we just had this we quickly cultivated a reputation as you you want your artist to sound good at this showcase call these guys because we were in the business is of exceeding expectations and and eight i would say eight out of the 10 artists that we worked with showcasing are nowhere near the music business anymore. They were like, "That's it, I'm out." <laughs> but you know, we got, I tried. We got a we got a record deal at Douglas Corner for Emily West, who to this day was one of the only singers I've ever played with who literally every hair in my body would stand up because she was so emotionally charged and so into it and so talented. She was freakishly talented, and um, I think we did a showcase and got our band rush low signed we did a showcase yeah you know, the showcase for al dean i think some of us were missing well, i don't think we were all at that we did like 40 showcases but i think the one where they actually pulled the trigger you guys have made i don't know if we were all there well that was a we were that showcase might have happened at the wild horse and i think it i think it was me we showing we, we, cody's dad now you you wouldn't have been there either could have sworn there was one time where you, neither of you guys were there and it was like I had the no. No, but we had done 40 showcases that that show you're thinking about what we, was that I think we were we were might have been on the road with Russell when that happened mm. um, and then we went and made the record but uh, but that was yeah I, I, as a matter of fact I think oddly enough I can't remember who was there that I think he only played a couple of songs but um, it was like one of those nights where like a bunch of people went down and played. Oh yeah, you know, you just get up and play two or three songs. But you remember we did Jason with a hat, without a hat, with a steel guitar, without a steel guitar, fiddle, uh, fiddle and steel, just fiddle, acoustic. You know, like every variation of those five songs: Amarillo Sky, Johnny Cash, Why, right? Yeah. So many. Well, let me ask you though, on, on all so many showcases. Showcases. Did you know that there was something there? Intrinsically, did you, did you like? Did you know just by playing in it and getting to know him and, and seeing what was happening that eventually something's uh, gonna happen? We knew it was unique. Yeah, and I think that's all you can know. I right. mean, it's hard to know what suit is going to get it or put money behind it. Mm -hmm. We knew it was unique, and you know, I, I think that's just why we were a part of it because we thought it was something. And it, it, seriously, it was passed on. We got passed on twice by each label, at least. How did that feel every time? Terrible. But, I mean, did, did you really, <laughs> but was there a glimmer of hope that, like, okay, they're missing out on, they just, there's something here, they're going to miss out, they're going to regret that. Well, you we, we go back to the trenches and keep on working and right. find the name. Yeah. I think the glimmer of hope was in that time, which was, this was a brilliant thing about Michael Knox. While we're getting passed on, he's also, also taking us in the studio and we're playing some of these early demos, like, Johnny Cash and mm -hmm. he Why? saw Why just to it had no deal yet but we were in the studio we were learning how to be in the studio we were learning how to record we were learning how to make a record um, make Johnny demos. Cash is a demo right buddy they got yeah. upgraded that mm -hmm. was the demo don't do that, the broken bow <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was yeah <laughs> that was cut in uh, 2002 <laughs> two or three yeah so, and, and that's incredible album that come out till 
the album came out. We made was it, that we made song it four, being, came out in five. Was it played by any other artist at the time? Or uh, Yes. Uh, Tracy, Tracy Bird. Tracy Bird actually cut it. And as a matter of fact, we were supposed to have cut it on Jason's first record. But isn't that right? That Tracy Bird cut it and yeah. put it on his? Was it on the so, Relentless record? <clears throat> no, it was on the second record. S- oh, was that what that yeah, one was? Relentless. Relentless. Yeah. Yeah. That was a sophomore slump. We didn't know if it was going to happen. I don't well, know if it's a rela- sophomore yeah, slump. I think it was the sophomore. That was also the first video that featured you guys. Yeah, I, I, it might have been the... Uh, Johnny Cash? Relentless. No, no, no. Oh. no Johnny well, Cash. Well, we had more of like, we were like actors in that video, but... The no, we, were, we were in like... Yeah, we were in Hicktown. And Hicktown oh, was that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Emerald Hicktown Sky was and a, y. We were almost... Uh, that was a 10-hour shoot in the mud pit with fires and trucks and... <laughs> girls. A lot of girls. ATVs. Yeah. Real country life right there. Apparently. every weekend. Yeah. And it was not glamorous because after that video, I was like, there's got to be a party somewhere. We got to go do something and celebrate this 12 hour video shoot that we did. Let's tear down your ghost beer. town. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, did it just not tell you? It was just. It all worked out. <laughs> worked out great. So now it's crazy to think that hits like those existed for years before years. The massive, you know, the mass. It media. is crazy to think that. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it's like what. So not only are you kind of just banking on this, this is, you know, lotto ticket kind of stuff where even eventually the songwriters are kind of going just, you know, this this thing has got life somewhere. It's not with you. It's not with you, but it's with him. Just well, on doing this. and interestingly enough, you know, it's talking about songs that did have <clears throat> hopeful lives with other people. Why was written by John Rich mm-hmm. and was, yeah, he was a great songwriter, successful. great artist and all that, but he wasn't sure that Jason was going to, you know, take off and he actually cut it on an artist that he was producing at that time, Shannon Brown, thinking that it was going to be a hit for her and he didn't realize that Jason was going to explode like right. that. But there were some great songs that we, I mean, Johnny Cash, why? We, was Amarillo yeah, part of the? Yeah. And I mean, those we played those all of the time, right? Every showcase, and the and the greatest thing about Amarillo, which every night we play that, every night we play that song, huge reaction, right? Still this day, huge. I remember when we were playing the clubs back when, the, I think we had just cut maybe half the first record, and we nothing was out, and we had these club dates, and we went and played like Cody Joe's with just playing songs that we recorded that no one's ever heard. And uh, so we use the, you know, for example, we use the uh, local band's gear. And, of course, they play their set of covers, and they say, from Nashville, Jason Aldean. And, of course, the dance floor completely empties. Mm-hmm. And we're up there, and I remember playing Emerald Sky, and some guy come up and just giving us the finger. <laughs> like, right <laughs> right in the, No one's on the dance floor at all. Everybody's just drinking. They've moved off to the Play side. Play funky music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, I mean, guys. And just walking up and just giving a... What was, just, nice, thanks. What was, was that Coyote, Coyote Joe's where, yep. like, for years I played on the house drum. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Charlotte? Yeah, yeah Charlotte. No respect. Charlotte. No, respect. Yeah. no respect. What's the other one? Crazy 8 Saloon or Lucky 8? I mean, or, I, or, so like, many. Um, mm. We played so many clubs. But it was it was a staple where we would keep going back. Something with eight, lucky eight. Oh, eight Luke. seconds. Eight seconds. Where Indianapolis? Oh, that was a. Oh my uh, gosh! <laughs> yes, bull riding kind of reference. And then yeah. what was that place where we would play? I think it may have been San Jose. We would play. We take break our deer, gear down, go out to the taco truck, and then a gigantic salsa orchestra would come in. <laughs> And it would be like a whole new oh, clientele. Oh, it was like uh, the Saddle Rack or that's, one of those. That's it was in it's Sacramento. It was San Jose. Oh, it was in it was Sac- San was it Jose. Sacramento? It's the one where Mathis was leaning up on my back of my rig. But you're right. It is the one. Where <laughs> the homemade guacamole. It was homemade, where they come it, in with the, the amazing guacamole. The salsa yeah. band right after. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like, oh my God. You know, I want to. So, so fun. I, I look back. You know, one of my favorite bands growing up was Van Halen. All right. Yes. And... I think about from the time I got into them, and I, granted I was eight years old. So every every year from like 1984 to, you know, when I graduated high school seemed like an eternity. You remember when you were a kid, everything the years just mm-hmm. dragged out. Time was so much different. You look at that when I got into them. I listened to the 1984 album from uh, start to finish in a tent on Assateague Island because my brother and his friend went down to the beach and they were. Uh, I was just left by myself and I'm like, yeah. oh, let me play. You know. I just instantly was hooked, you know. And then I looked at, you know, back when Van Halen came back, it came out, it was 1978. Six years right. mm-hmm. was like a lifetime. 
to an eight-year-old. But then I think about from 1978 on up to 93, well, I mean, the last album I had before that was 91 with For Unlawful Carnal Knowledge, and I believe in 93, 90, well, 95, they released um, uh, the next one. I can't remember the name of it. But 15 years. the Crystal Pepsi one? That's right now. 51, yeah, that 50. Off, uh, that was uh, right now. Carnal off, Knowledge one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So you guys have been doing this for... 20 years. With Jason. Well... Recording and touring 15. nonstop for 15 years. 15 years. Yeah. 15. Okay. Think about that. You know what I mean? It's like you are now at like the 1993 version of where Van Halen was. And you know, does that make sense? Is, is totally. That kind of, it does, know, but I don't know if we can ever, I, I mean, I can't put any perspective on that. I mean, I think for us, it's just, we're just, playing, we're playing and, oh, wow, we're looking, we're playing an arena. Ba, 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 ba. Oh, yeah. there's Fenway Park. Oh, there's a state. I mean, you, you don't get many times to go and look back and have any perspective. To me, I don't. I mean, but the longevity I don't think, of it. I don't you know? think I still can't. I can't. I can't process. It's just it. been such a home base for a long time. It's like you guys sold out Wrigley Field. You guys sold out two nights at Red Rocks. You guys sold out the Hollywood Bowl, Bowl in an hour. It's like what? I know. For me, it's just not enough. It's like. Yeah, it's it's. I think that's. But maybe, can it, you actually see? I can't process it. I right. like if that was any of your childhood idols. We like we'll sit there and we'll watch whatever VH1 behind the music Bon Jovi yeah. or this and they're playing those arenas. We're like, oh my god, that's awesome! And then so we walk goes, out and play our own arena to a bigger crowd, and <laughs> that it, doesn't have any impact on you at all. Like it's well, I mean, hard to. I don't know. It's just hard to fathom. It's I think it's. I think it's because what goes on is the road for us to get here wasn't like it is for some exacts today. I see some exacts where they spend a year doing something, then they're out on a tour. Yeah. For us, it was way different. It was a lot of it took a long time, a lot of a slow ride, and I think because of the of so many shows we played in bars and and all the years that we played in bars before we moved here, mm -hmm. like lifelong musician since we were kids yeah i think part of the charm of that is that i know for myself like i'm really proud of what we've done but i i'm still i, I don't like i still want to want us to be even greater mm -hmm. i still think we can always be better and maybe that's why we don't take the time to say yeah, and we do every now and then, every couple, every twice a year. Something happens every and we'll few have a years, moment. and we'll yeah. go, "Wow, that was big." Otherwise, we're just trying to make great records and find better songs and be a better band. Right. We can always be a better band. And we check in with each other every night. I mean, I do that yeah. little. You guys put me in charge of this pep talk, and you know, sometimes they're they're deeper than others. Sometimes it's just like we got let's go play, guys. The people need to be entertained. But sometimes it's just like, well, guys, we just did this or just did that. Let's go kill them, you know. So it's, it's being in touch with that 12-year-old kid that you were that yeah. longed to be where you are now. Yeah. And it's kind of keeping that perspective. I mean, it's it's interesting. Well, and what gets interesting is, <clears throat> Tully was talking about some of the newer bands that are coming up. Well, what what does... So fast. Well, I was, what I was going to say is what does blow my mind is when yeah. a guy from another band goes, man, I grew up listening to you. Yeah, it's really yeah, weird exactly <laughs> that's heavy bro yeah because they're 23 and, right well, and yeah. we've been out for 15 years so they that would have been sense. 7 years yeah. old learning to play their instruments that's mind that, that blowing that does blow my mind it happens on a regular basis and they're, and they're they're this they're almost shaking they're, they're like god it's like so I have to be out here with you guys you know like I, I remember sitting in my room learning to play these songs and I'm like not crazy talking about? And then it hit me I'm like well yeah he was Six yeah. years old, <laughs> but, see, but, but we don't we don't act our age, right? And we're like, and thank God, we don't. That's get, interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we're just we're just like eternally youthful, like we're the vampires of the music business. I mean, it's like playing that instrument over there. It, it keeps you young. It, I mean, it just keeps us young, and we want more. Wouldn't it be nice to do? 50 stadiums a year? I mean, we're doing arenas and we're doing amphitheaters, which is It amazing, does keep you... I never guessed that you were 64. We want to... <laughs> like Benjamin Button. I think we're, you know... <laughs> Q John. Shazam! Shazam! <laughs> I want that. That's a great little sound effect. Yeah, I, we're good. still pulling, you know, a lot of younger crowd too, which is great. Younger crowds and, 
older crowds. That's now, for sure. But, uh, you know. We we saw you guys in Charlotte. We brought uh, the kids, two of them, uh, to last the show year. last year. It was like two years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, the uh, the crowd is young. My wife and I were looking at each other, going. Yeah, this is not our scene anymore. But you know, uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not wearing shorts short enough right now. Yeah, but Al Dean's <laughs> audience is like 15 to 55. That crazy male and female, yeah. which is yeah. impossible to achieve. Oh, mm-hmm. it's a wonderful thing. Yeah, lightning in a bottle. I mean, thinking about it, you know, if someone liked us when they were 30, you know, when yeah. we first came out, a 45 years old. Yeah, I mean. I That's, remember watching the video for the first time, yeah. Hick Down, and I, you know, I saw Rich playing, and I'm like, yeah, I could probably do that. Yeah. You, you could. That's, I, I, that's, the, that's the thing about that's the thing about talent versus actually getting the chair. Between talent and getting the chair is all the stuff that no one wants to do. Yeah, you're you right. Know? It's a good point. Yeah. Anybody can play the lick. Yeah. Most yeah. people can play the lick. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, but we've probably played Hicktown. 1500 times with the same passion and tenacity and zest and zeal and focus and someone they you know they're like rich i'm losing focus like like my mind is wandering and and (laughs) when i play my cover band over the weekend i said well yeah you're probably bored of the songs and stuff but here's the deal this is what separates the men from the boys you could probably play my exact same drum part but can you go out there at the same conviction and passion passion every night for 15 years well people i I think there's a misnomer where Oh yeah, I can play that that lick. I could do that every night for fifteen but years. But even before that, where the rubber meets the road for me, and, and this is where I kind of draw the line in the sand is: but can you create it? Yeah, can you create it, and can you play it? Well, that's a lot of people asking. In the red, well. and can you can you record it, and yeah. can you sit there and and make a record and come up with that part when you don't have three weeks to sit there in your room and hash something out so to me that's where um oh, this is well, very that's, touchy that's, this that, is a very this well, is a very touchy separating line musicians from musicians we're talking about guys <clears throat> jim is saying you know if i if J- jim had a day he could probably learn the drum part to hick town of course but the but look at the what we had to do to go how bad do you think i am <laughs> I mean, you could do it. Half hey, a Jim, day. I got to be honest. I don't know if I knew you played drums. I, <laughs> I told you right in this very seven moment. Hours. I'm so sorry. I didn't know that. You know what's so funny is that Jim's most, always been most the man people in my the, the most camera. people in my life are, are I meet through drumming, and but yeah. they have all these other side talents. You know, drummers are like that. Yeah, you know what? You guys like each other. It's fascinating, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is because. <laughs> Only, guitar players, for the most part, they hate the stain. Yeah, they don't like each other. That's for the, the, for the most thing part. ever. And bass players, we only have a couple people we like. <laughs> Very few. Most we don't. Drummers, but are drummers are oddly supportive. To, there's a couple exceptions. Why but is most that? of you get Why along? Oh. Why is that? I Almost all of us get along. Yeah. Why? Just a fraternity, man. It goes all the way back to. You guys feel bad for each other? No, we we, beat, we used to like beat on logs and like skulls and like that was the man's first instrument. But, but yeah. think about it, we're getting a lot. It's very cathartic to be a drummer, so we're we're cool to each other. Totally, you know, interesting. You're yeah. be, beating things up. It's the greatest thing. That release, Hulk you guys, smash. You, you guys have too many friends. So many friends. <laughs> I think so too. Too many friends. Too many you friends. think we're too so many, many friends? friends? I do. I, I think in general people have too many friends. I'm a relationship. I'm a relationship. I'm a relationship guy, buddy. You know. Well, I mean, a relationship is one thing, but ah, uh, why do you need so many friends? I'm just I'm just friendly to everybody, and they gravitate towards. Well, me. you can be friendly, but you don't need as many friends. So, I don't do you not think you have that you friends? specifically. And what is a or friend? Maybe I am. And the difference between a friend and an acquaintance, someone that you know, and someone that you don't return their text. No, there's friends and there's dear friends. Ah. It's much you know, simpler for me. Jesus set the standard when it came to friends. We could only handle 12. Three on your inner circle. 12's a little high for was me. Was it me, Jesus? <laughs> <laughs> it was. It is. I think he set the model. It's an interesting model. Yeah. yeah. It is. It's, yeah. I think like about they, it. It's all you were... Like how they all got on the same side of the table. Like they knew they were gonna, someone's going to take a selfie or something. You know? <laughs> me? Uh, yeah. Let's move on. So... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> drummers have too many friends. <laughs> Guitar players Definitely. don't like other guitar players. Uh, I mean, I I like a lot of other guitar players. I'm just right. saying, in general, most guitar players don't hang out. Yeah, I mean, there was all we in, in my high school. We had the one like a handful of people that were in the metal and rock bands. 
And I kind of got on the tail end of that. I became the drummer in high school. Mm-hmm. That was actually halfway decent. And the other guy that was the guitar player who still plays today, and he's he's, he's amazing, um, was, was that guy. And it's like, you know, whenever there was competition, I remember not really shying away from other drummers. Like, hey, you're a drummer. Cool, man. We'll get along. And if there were other guitar players around, like this guy named Lanning, that's what was his name. And Lanning. He, Lanning Ken. He's a, he's a shredder, man. He's really good. He, um, does he play with anyone? Um, I'm not sure if he does. <laughs> not around here. Too many notes. All the, everything's, <laughs> everything's, play too many notes, Lanning. Yeah, exactly. Play too much Lanning. Like 128th notes, that kind of stuff. So he, um, he he just yeah he 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 never really gravitated towards other people that do what he does. Yeah, bass players on the other hand, they're kind of like eh, you're yeah. like you're like a drummer. No, <laughs> more of an elitist actually. It's, it's, <laughs> I, I think I have a few very uh, some very close friends I played, but but only a, a few, and they're all you're I, very friendly with bass players. <sighs> you're a hard guy to get to know anyway. Either one. Well, that is true. Well, he likes to keep a circle of bass players because he's always selling his gear and he always wants to like have people. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest with you. Like every time I like Rich has me in, in the sessions or doing a video, I walk in, Kurt's there. He's like, he gives me a big hug and you look at me like, what are you doing here? <sighs> you again. Now, uh, let's see, get to this. Let's get to this. What's up with that? Man? I am. Uh, I'm super quiet. I love where you wait for a public forum. I think, I Tully, <laughs> I think Tully is misunderstood. <laughs> I'm, I agree. I, I think I'm understood. I just, <laughs> I just, uh, I was trying I just, to help the, the, you. You're, you're, you're a very close friend of mine. But when I'm in, <laughs> when I'm in work mode, when I'm in work mode, especially, I, I I'm not, yeah. I'm not Mister. How, you, you know, I, what's I, the weather I, like? Or yeah, how, you know, I mean, I, you know, you're I, kind of a wallflower. Yeah, I, I just uh, not I, a networker. I, uh, no, he's a networker. I'm, he? I'm a networker. Yes. I just like to keep yeah. my my bubble is very small and yeah. and you, you're don't get me wrong i consider you a friend I, at least i thought i did until you said that no, no, a was, friend or an acquaintance he's is a friend it, is he a friend or a dear? Are you within the 12 wait a minute am i a friend of ours or a friend of yours you're a friend of mine wow you know, yeah you're a friend nice. of mine right? i would call you up if i needed something <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a, <laughs> i needed a podcast done. <laughs> i get this a lot though i get um you're very unapproachable and very yes i i'm okay with that yeah um, that's true. I am actually okay with it, but I, I, I am very loyal to my inner circle of friends. Yeah, very and true as well. So, which, which I'm completely. You're in the circle. Yeah, oh yeah, you, you're in the circle, Jim. You have definitely got one foot in there. I mean, judging by the last, you know, shoot that I was at, I was like, oh, yeah, I guess I'm, you know, Rich yeah. trusts me enough that I'm not going to say or do something that's embarrassing. No, no, no. I think I'm. Mis- if anything, I'm just probably comfortable around you. Uh, if, I, if I didn't want you in there, I would have definitely said something. It, it's that kinda, is true as well. It's kind of like uh, <laughs> when I got met, when I dated my wife and her her brothers were. Uh, I was like, I, I'd tell my wife at the time I was very insecure, and I would say, you know, I'm not. I'm just not sure if you're if Jeremy and Justin like me all that much, and she'd go. No, no, they, they really do. You'd know otherwise. I said, how do I know? And we talked about it openly one night, and they said, Jim, if you walked in and we looked at each other like, and I said, is that what that look is? And you're like, we don't do that to you. Yeah. But they never did that to me. Yeah. So I was kind of in. You're in. Yeah, yeah, definitely in. You've been here, been around us for a long Ten time. Years. That's crazy. I think yeah, I'm just comfortable, and um, I don't work with you on a level that... Right. I mean, there's not a lot of session drummers that carry their own video crew. I mean, this is well, like, that is true as well. Yeah. But hey, you gotta things. you gotta capture life because it is fleeting, you know. Um, you know, guys, you guys have <laughs> continued to grow and evolve. I mean, we did our time with New Voice Entertainment. We produced three number one songs, and then I took a stab at five years of learning a new skill. You know, writing songs every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And you know, let's face it, not a lot of people can say that they've had three number one songs with a Tasmanian pop country band. But you guys <laughs> have. By the way, Is I'm T pop. No, it's a, that's um. You know, the Wolf Brothers, and yeah, they are right. coming back to Nashville, Good. and we're writing again. Good. They're great. So, so I love. They're awesome. Yeah. I lo- and I by just like saying, you know, it's like I mean, what a niche, a Tasmanian pop country band. I mean, wow, you guys have had mainstream success. Um, for the for the listeners out there that are longtime Al Dean fans, which tracks did you guys write so they can focus on it and crank it up even harder? Uh, they don't know, right? Turn it up. We uh, they don't know. Tony and I wrote a. Um, 
on the last record, Reason to Love L.A., mm -hmm. which we're both very mm -hmm. proud of that song. I think we both love that. Uh, actually, on the last record, we had a song called Like You Were Mine. Mm -hmm. And we've got two that are on the upcoming album as well. Cha-ching. Is there a money thing on there, bud? I don't this? think so. We can do that. Tully also wrote uh, In Case You Don't Remember, which was on two records ago. Is that uh, right? They don't know record. They don't know record. Yeah. You got the you had the name of the tour. They don't know. It was yeah. a single. It was the name of the record. It was the name of the tour. My God. Yeah. And then what was the seeing red for Dustin Lynch? That was your number one, right? Mm -hmm. Tully and I wrote that for Dustin I was Dustin at the Lynch. party and all your family was there. Yeah. You guys gave good speeches. See, even then, I... I uh, Did it seem real? You're like, oh my God, I'm in the songwriting capital of the world I, it, and I'm a number one songwriter. It doesn't hit me like that. I wish it did. It hits me like... Now what? Now, now we got to do it again. Or now we got to yeah, I mean, do I think something that's, else. I, I know that Tully and I would both say that that we don't look back on any of that. It's all what is happening today and what's going to happen tomorrow because if you aren't thinking that way, you're going to get left in the past. Mm -hmm. You need to move You've got to continuously adapt. You've got to continuously yeah, just, adapt Are you in the mindset back. of putting yourselves out of business? What's going to put me out of business? I'm not sure I, I know I what that understand. means. Like thinking how another company would be trying, you know, a company or, or somebody that's up and coming that would try and put you out of business. Uh, I don't know if I look at it like that. It's I just healthy. think if we're looking hard or we're working hard at what we do, I think we're okay. Yeah. I it, agree. It's, it's, yeah, it's... What's next, though? I mean, is it... Because you're doing, you know, the recording, playing with Jason, mm -hmm. and then you're doing the songwriting. Yeah. S like what Rich is doing, are you thinking about entertaining speaking or anything like that? Because no, right, you we were, guys... Honestly, what yeah. I would like to do, because we've had you know, this gentleman, Cardone, on our show, <clears throat> who's a, a mega influencer on Instagram and everything. He's got a ton of followers. He does a thing every year called the 10X Growth Con, and it's he's going on number four. It's going to be in Vegas this year. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we've been trying to get Rich on his platform for years. Oh, it'll be when the time is right. Um, sure. I'm there. But it's funny because, I mean, you know, having the Three Kings as like... House band? A house band. And, you know, a speaking kind of thing would be interesting yeah. angle. Is that We're something great. you guys ever want to do eventually? Oh, I, I, think, I think anything, didn't mean to interrupt, I think anything that involves us three, we're always <coughs> up for. Yeah. I mean, we know that we work well together. We know that we love each other. We know that there's a chemistry there. I mean, we're there's always up be a, for anything. The, the reality show has got to happen. Uh, or at well, least another had, documentary. We've had, uh, yeah, the ins and outs with the <laughs> reality shows. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's some people that would... Uh, welcome another documentary y the interesting thing is just you know y you know the access because we are a part of a huge thing but our name is not on the marquee so we still have to dance around a little bit sure. it just makes things somewhat uncomfortable sometimes because like even the emails come in it's like hi rich we want to promote you for the new line of sabian symbols but we need access to come and do video and photos all day at this giant arena and it's a union arena and it's five thousand dollars for a videographer to walk into the room and then the mm -hmm. company goes yeah just take a, some GoPro footage and, <laughs> and, and, and a, and a high-res yeah. photo and we'll see what we can do. And the same thing with like, you know, my drum company that I've been with since 1993, Remo Drumheads, they're like, hey, can we come and shoot video from the side stage at Summerfest next week? And I'm like, let me just send you the GoPro footage. It's high, you know, I mean, then you don't have to deal with passes and access and yeah the logistics it's can get so hard. difficult and people just don't realize the logistics of literally having to babysit someone all day on an arena and they can't go to the bathroom by themselves without having a pass and being escorted by you it's like a long day it, right yeah. and oh, yeah. so like just very long just when someone is just back to our friends as talk. soon as someone <laughs> so you know, it's not like the good old days where you could just you know bring somebody along it's very political and you got well it's just well, i mean look at vegas we got to consider everything you got the security yeah, is yeah, different yeah. now yeah it's political right. and it's security they just have to take all precautions right yeah i mean look at those drums right those were sitting on stage guys for 40 to 60 days i forget the exact length of time but that's the vegas kit and and, and those are never getting sold or moved, or, and they and they're still beautiful. There's not a scratch on them. I'm making music on them to this day. Yeah. It's insane. Yeah. Have you guys ever talked publicly about that? I mean, we don't make a, a habit of it because mm -hmm. you, you dance around it a little bit. I think it's a thing where. Well, I, I think 
we all kind of feel this way. We talk about it together at times because we know each other understands it. Talking with someone that was outside of the situation has zero comprehension of what it was or I couldn't tell you Mm -hmm. what it was. So I think we just find comfort in each other and we'll talk about it and it is what it is. It's not like it's, you know, we break down when we talk to each other about it, but we just know that each other understands that that morning for me uh <clears throat> we got up my wife was browsing facebook and we hadn't heard anything that had happened and all of a sudden she gasped <gasps> you know just <gasps> what and she just started literally we're laying in bed and i'm getting ready to get my day going and she just starts she's like so vegas and rich and i'm going what what are you talking about she goes do you didn't see what happened i have no idea you know i looked it up and I'm, oh my gosh and instantly i texted you and i said are you you know, please text me back. Are you okay? Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was one of those things that, yeah, I'm kind of close to it and I'm able to get the inside scoop, so to speak. But basically I kind of looked at it from not, not on the same level as you guys, of course, but knowing you guys and being, have spent some time with you, having that feeling and that, that limited connection of, of having a little bit of semblance of connection to it. I mentioned the five things that that helps peep that help people recover from anything in their life, and that's f- faith, family, friends, passion, and purpose. Faith, family, friends, passion, and purpose. And so I went and talked to somebody, and the, the girl said, "You have all five of these things. You're probably going to be okay." Finish the statement. I get up every day, and I oh, I do my gratitude know. list every day. Is too. that something new for you? I no. Well, you know, I uh, it's I more important know. than ever to not miss it. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if I have this grand, uh, and I'm not trying to make, you know, I don't know if I have a grand list that I have every day now. It's just, it's not like that. No. Like Rich said, if you've got those things, then you've got them, and that's part of my everyday life, period. So. Oh, yeah. Um, but I do, I will say, like, you, I can, we can never compare ourselves to anyone who it was in, in war. Mm-hmm. like a soldier with PTSD sure. but but I have I get really freaked out on the highway when someone else is driving and I'm in a lot of Ubers and I just literally I play with my phone and I don't look up and um, I then like loud like super loud noises unrelated musical noises like just loud things fireworks mm-hmm. and freaks me out a little bit you know you know my business partner Tim is a service-connected disabled veteran yes. from the Marine Corps. And we just moved into our new office building, and uh, there was a garbage truck outside, and I was apparently wrestling with one of the dumpsters, that, and it, it just couldn't coordinate itself with emptying this thing. And we were sitting inside the room talking about different things, and they, they must have dropped this thing off the forks, and it must have hit the ground, and this went, boom! You know, all of us kind of jolted, but he was like... I mean, he almost hit the flipping ceiling. And you know Tim. He's like seven feet tall. Yeah. So it's, you know, just I've never seen that side of him to that that kind of an effect. I'm a little bit of a nervous now anyways. You know, I don't like the roller coasters and that kind of stuff, you know, guys. (laughs) But, but, you know, I mean, when somebody else is at the wheel and they're so close to that left-hand guardrail, I'm just like, why do you have to go 92 against the left-hand guardrail? I mean, what if you pop a tire? Can't you stay in the middle lane and go 75? You know, and you and you make these suggestions to your Uber driver, you know. But it's just... You've I, always been like that. And plus I've also... Yeah. Well, I was in that... You know, I was in that accident too yeah. in February. Last February, the airbag went off. I was spinning around. Ended up facing oncoming traffic on a Saturday night in Los Angeles on one of the busiest freeways at one thirty in the morning. Mm-hmm. Like, wow. How do I not know that about you? <sighs> I should be a goner from that one buddy was that in the uh q3 it was in the element that's oh, how okay. i bought the q3 oh, okay. with my state farm money i uh, gotcha state farm oh, pays gotcha. out guys. what are you gonna do with the uh you got a lease coming up right? i know uh jim, jim what is, should he do jim's my think? car whisperer so he's gonna go come shopping with me because he sold cars so he knows all of the red tape and all the add-ons that they try to stick you with right yeah so he's my I like, negotiate the deal are you gonna buy, buy or lease again? i'm gonna lease again yeah. but uh, but it makes but, the most sense on that kind but of i'm not gonna it's not gonna be that what are you much. guys driving these days I uh, went to a I've truck. Got a, I've got a four runner. Yeah, that's not. It's, a, it's an SUV. Yeah. yeah. I've got a little black Mustang. 
I like Black it. Mustang. Uh, Tiny little thing. You guys I buy like or it. lease? Uh, I lease. I bought you? mine. Yeah. Did you? Leasing makes sense. For what yeah. we do, we're not in town. We're yeah, <coughs> yeah. But you don't lease a German car like yours, <laughs> or you don't buy a German car like yours. Yeah, no, no, you, no. You lease it. No, no. Yeah, it makes the most. It's going to be really hard to, to change brands because that that car is so well made, and you walk about a foot taller when you get out of it. <laughs> I was struggling to get out of it today. It's the only car that I ride higher than. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, literally, you, you, you feel the, so good about yourself when you get out of the car. It's yeah. like it's like when you come out of your workout, you look in your mirror and you're, and you're like a foot tall, and you're like, "All right, man." When <laughs> when I'm in that car, it's like, it's, you're, it's, like you're like five seven that we get out yeah, of the car. Yeah, <laughs> I think That's I, a nice car. I think it I is. might be. I think I might be five eight. I think I might be five eight. You're growing. <laughs> I put, you know what I just put I put 5'8 on all my resumes you know what I mean well, but that was yeah. not nearly enough for the young and the rest what do you so put I be uh, age what do you put I put 5 I, I, what's that what do you put for age <laughs> what do you put for your age oh no I real my real age really yeah because your casting directors you guys know lie about that your ages? you can play I, I mean I did for 20 years <laughs> solid yeah <laughs> did for a long time embracing it now yeah at this Enjoy point you, 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 you're younger than I am um, pro, uh, how old are you? 43. I'm 44. There You're you older go. than I am. Yeah, see? Oh, okay. Maybe that's why you never thought that I was your friend because I was I always <laughs> hold you down because I, I knew I you were younger I than me. I didn't think, I never said that. Yes, I, you did. I just, you, I, no, I didn't. I, I didn't. Actually kind of hurt. I thought there was some kind of question. Are you hurt? Really? I can play. I really hurt my feelings. I thought I'm we sorry. had this, I, I'll, I thought we had this really unspoken close thing going and we, not to know that we, that we don't kind of hurt. It, uh, well, I apologize. I did I'm not sure, joking. I know. This is what friends do. They joke. I like that new shirt. Jim just bought this new Wrangler shirt today. <laughs> it's incredible. He you goes, like it? I was like, I went to go get some yeah, SD sure. cards. He goes, I'm going to get a couple new shirts. Yeah. You, go you got a zipper there for your, I do. For your, Target. for your flies. You go fly fishing. There's a zipper put, put my and weed in it. a pocket. It's amazing. So, uh, Keller, um, do you have any questions that you ever wanted to ask your uncles? Um, well, I'm no. sure he's got questions. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. What grade are you in? Oh, good for you. It's really my good. My daughter's going to the eighth. What is puberty? Eighth grade? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Let's save that for Tully and Keller. <laughs> you understand the... Are you getting hit with, like, weird questions? Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, the weird questions. I mean, they, they've, they've... Like, we've, did, what, we've, did we've you just ask me that? We've you guys had the bridges. talk? Had the talk? We had the talk. Oh, good. Well, it was we, great. My son and I, he, like, in front of people, would come up to me and be like, Dad, what is... And I'm like, dude, real What? Right now? You don't need, yeah. And my wife is sitting there going, <laughs> you know, she's laughing. Like, what is Kalingus? Yes. Shazam! <laughs> <laughs> That's good for him. He needed to. Yeah, he, he, he does needs to cut loose a little. Yeah. Um, this was great. Do yeah. You, do you have any questions that you've ever wanted, wanted to ask two of the three kings? You know everything about me. Well, I mean, that was the only questions. Like, you know, why does Tully shoot daggers at me when he sees me? Mm -hmm. I don't. <laughs> He's misunderstood. Yeah, so you got to remember, he's a New Englander, too. He's a New Englander. So am I. That's true. I, you are from Connecticut. Yeah. I'm just, I don't need more friends. So, Jim, you're is, out? Is, no, you're he's already, already a friend. This okay. was really controversial. Am I out of the You don't need more now? friends. I'm on the fence about Pink Floyd. <laughs> you don't like the Rolling Stones. Uh -oh. Oh, what happened? The, uh, the Merv Griffin set. <laughs> what happened, bud? Uh, uh, I think it just hit this. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got... There we Yay! go. Hey, we're back. No, and out. we're back. I am misunderstood, I think, a touch, because, like, I just don't know why everybody has to always talk. Like, well, you bring up a good point. Social media, overrated too much? Well, I mean, it's a, it's a to me, it's a generational it's thing, a, a little bit. It Used properly, I think it's amazing, but yeah. most people don't, so I mean... And we got a steel guitar player who was sworn against it, and now he is addicted Really? Yeah, he's in. He's something else. Carl is in, 100%. But it helps your mm. career. Sure. That's yeah. I don't think these guys are on social media to help. They just do it because it's fun because they can post pictures of cool, fun things. and Yeah, yeah I mean, just uh, you don't every use once in a while, I have to throw it out to the, yeah, know, the I, PRSs. And the, I got it. I've actually got Adidas. it. Adidas. <laughs> yeah. Hello. <laughs> Adidas. Yeah, buy it, man. I've actually I'm, got it. I, I use it to... To post things at my companies, you know. Tully Kennedy, I like it loud. That's me. Yeah. Oh, you have a mantra? 
I put it up there a few months ago. Yeah, I like follow, it loud. Follow yeah. the guys, guys. It's uh, at Tully Kennedy on I don't Instagram. Think I have I feel lucky if you're one of my friends. <laughs> I like it loud. I never noticed that. That's probably. not a bad posture to have. I put it in there. I don't know. Maybe maybe six months ago. I'm gonna I like put. It loud. I, I'm gonna put God feedback. I like it quiet. Kurt's business card I in like 1997 was. Kurt's is gonna be. Feedback. Are you a guitar player? Don't follow me. <laughs> That's fantastic. Where's the? Oh, there it is. I like it loud. Yeah. yeah. I like it loud. Well, this is great. I do like it loud. Jim, we really like you fielding questions on this uh, third I am, episode. Of I mean, we could do show. three or great. four uh, parts on this, right? We didn't even I think scratch a service. Oh, no. Well, you guys can be recurring guests. And, and well, totally. it, it, we need to be. And it's a hosting showcase for, for Jim. Because I still feel like I have to earn his friendship back <laughs> somehow. I lost it. I didn't know no. I didn't know I didn't have and it. And actually, didn't next happen. time, Keller needs a mic. I mean, seriously, that needs to be part of the thing. Yeah, Keller. Right? Because you've got insight. He's got insight. What's the hot thing? Most... is As far as apps you're... and stuff like that, what's the next thing we need to be watching out for? What? Like apps. new apps. Like my, my son is constantly hitting me up for new stuff constantly. He, he, you know, he's like, Dad, can I get MeWe? What the hell is MeWe? You know, it's all the kids are doing it. You know, that kind of stuff. TikTok. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> Keller, I, I, maybe you're too old for this, and it's a little bit younger than you, but most younger people watch YouTube of, like, someone playing another game. Yeah. I, or I don't... Do you do that, or does your age group do that? A little bit. Yeah. Now, I, I kind of watch other things now, but... So, did you, like, watch somebody playing Minecraft, or what's the game of choice? Minecraft. Fortnite, yeah. Yeah, so much Fortnite. I tell all the kids in my speeches, I, I say, parents, if your kids can do anything else but play Fortnite and they're interested in anything, please support them 150%. You know? I try not I, to play it too much. My parents did that. All of our parents were very supportive. I mean, you were in yeah. your dad's band. I right. met you playing in your dad's band. Right. And um, your dad is a musician, right, Tully? I mean, you mm -hmm. guys come from stock. My dad's an accountant. I mean, and so that's why he was like, son... She, she gave me really good advice. Old man Redman, he's great. Yeah, love 70, great man. 74 years old. Great girlfriend. One of the only guys I know that has two hole in ones. <laughs> you know? I love your dad. We he's do all awesome. Interesting. We all have great parents. We really, really do. Yeah, very blessed. Well, we will definitely wrap this up. Kurt, Tully, thank you for joining me today. Thanks, so buddy. fun. Love you, buddy. Thanks for stopping by. Third episode of the Rich Redman Show. My co-host, my co-producer, Jim McCarthy. You Jim called him my sidekick earlier. Oh, he friend. is my sidekick. I am a sidekick. You're my friend, his sidekick. How's You're that? my friend, too. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. Rate, like, subscribe that. us. Yeah, we love it. The Rich Redman Show. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Rich. This has been The Rich Redman Show. Subscribe, rate, and follow along at richredman.com forward slash podcasts.